not the little girl from EC anymore. I have grown up. In the 90s, Drew took on some edgier roles. I can just imagine, you know, my godfather watching this. <laughs> I mean, how embarrassing he's going to watch me, you know, having sex at a Mercedes Benz in the rain. I mean, that's terrifying. Co star Tom Skerritt remembers Drew's determination. What she was presenting to me personally and professionally was a representation of someone who was going to overcome whatever problems she had. And she understood that, which was unique. TV ready for you? I don't know. I mean, I think that it, it, it you know, somebody asked me that before and the question really confused me. Mm -hmm. I think that for me, because I'm very expressive and somewhat controversial, or at least controversy surrounds my life, um, I don't know how the television audience is going to take to me. I was sitting in a restaurant in Beverly Hills and with my friends and there was a tug at my sleeve and this you know, exquisite nine, eight or nine year old child was uh, standing there and it was Drew Barrymore and, and she said, hi, I love your movie. I've seen it 50 times and I know every word. And I was so undone by this beautiful child. So we've stayed kind of uh, friendly and, and so I was able to call her up and ask her to be in the show. This is my mother, Camilla Tremont. Hi, nice to meet you. but you just want to be her for a day. This is the girl that you've envied your whole life, that you always wanted to be in your wildest fantasies, but never, ever, ever dreamed or even thought of becoming someone like that. And for me, being Ivy let me live out those fantasies for three months, which was absolutely incredible. Drew attended the Poison Ivy premiere with her mother Jade and fiance Jamie Walters. On her kind of prove to Hollywood that she was back. 17-year-old Drew Barrymore was back. She was also in love. That February, Drew moved in with her new boyfriend, Jamie Walters. Four months later, they were engaged. There were people standing by my side supporting me while I was betraying Ivy, which was very tough. I mean, there were times when I thought, am I crazy for doing this? The film wrapped at the end of June. Three months later, Drew's agent, J.J. Harris, introduced her to another client, 22-year-old actor and singer, Jamie Walters. There were two of the most beautiful, physically and really, really adorable people. And I did think they would be a good match, and, um, and they really did. I think that was probably a breakthrough role simply because she was able to do it. And people saw that they could count on. How you doing, Drew? I'm really good. Good. I'm sitting here with my friend Drew Barrymore, who I've known since she was small. And now she's bigger. I'm so thrilled for you getting married. I'm excited. I mean, me too. Yeah. I'm nervous and excited. And I'm nervous because I don't think I've ever made such a great decision. As to get married? Yeah. This is amazing. I'm looking at you and I'm thinking, OK, you're going to get married. At some point, you're going to have, like, babies. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to, like, you know, grown woman. <laughs> Hey, you happy? I couldn't be happier. Well, good for you, because I view your life from afar, and, you know, I think this town can be the dregs in certain ways. I used to see you in trouble, it seemed to me, from, a, like I said, from afar, and they put you on the cover of magazines, and I thought, for God's sake, somebody ought to just yeah, take this girl and love her. I said they should spank you with People something. Magazine instead of putting you on the cover, but I only meant that because I think this town <laughs> is vicious in that regard. I mean... You're a kid, for God's sakes, growing up in this madness, and somebody should say, get over here, I love you, and I love you enough to crack you on the ass and tell you to get it together, you know? But you look happy now. You got a bow, and you're in love, and you're uh, clean for three years, you told so me? So in love. 
Yeah, yeah well, good so. for you. Drew was cast in ABC's version of The Sordid Tale. The whirlwind shoot took place in Vancouver in November 1992. That was a great chance for me um, to do the Amy Fisher story. I thought how amazing and challenging it would be to imitate someone rather than create someone. Drew was hot. But her relationship with fiance Jamie Walters cool. That December, Drew returned home to some bad news. Walters called off the engagement and moved out. They were just never together. The time apart, the distance just like took a toll on their relationship. And finally, they just, you know, separated. Drew took the breakup hard, but less than a week later, she got some good news. Barrymore was nominated for a Golden Globe as Best Actress in Gun Crazy. This is such an honor to me. I'm so grateful to not only be a part of this, but that people recognized me in this film. I, I think I, someone needs to pinch me. Drew didn't win the award, but she reestablished herself as a major player. Would casting people and producers not even see you, or did you go and read and they were like, "Okay, thanks, babe," and you know, I mean, yeah, they, they, I, when I would walk in there, they sort of looked at me like, "Yes, like, <laughs> what are you gonna do for us?" and very mean and cold. And then there were very supportive people who, who were very welcoming and warm to me. But there were definitely people who looked at me like, "Who do you think you are?" and don't you know what a privilege it is to be reading for us? And I took everything with a grain of salt. And that's, and I'm just, I'm really diehard ambition. So that's why I got back on track. 